Lars, how do you feel about collecting your Tesla today? Uh, pretty good actually. As you can imagine, uh, the waiting times are quite intense these days. So actually uh, getting it is, uh, oh, I'm super excited about it and I was waiting for quite a bit. Uh, and the more you read about it, the more excited you get. So uh, after all, uh, it's a great day. And uh, yesterday, almost like when I was a kid, uh, I couldn't sleep uh, uh, because uh, I was so excited to actually pick it up. So today, team, it's the 3rd of June, 2022. Lars is picking up his first Tesla That's ever. Right. Yes. How long was the wait? Uh, what, three months, four months. Three to four months. Let's not keep Lars waiting any longer. Today, Lars is collecting his Tesla Model 3 Performance. Congrats, Lara. Hey, thank you so much. Great, I'm really happy, you know. It's a big day. Indeed. You've got your Model 3 performance now. What's the feeling like now? Uh, really good. Um, well, obviously getting a car in Singapore is always a really good thing uh, and a super expensive thing, but uh, I'm super happy, obviously, that I finally have it and I uh, can't wait to try it out on the highway and the, the other locations in Singapore. So one of the first things a new owners will do going to the highway is to calibrate their autopilot camera. But before all of that, Lars mentioned this. It's an expensive car. And what should the audience know about you? Um, well, I, I think first to clarify what the car, I think in Singapore, um, there's probably no really logical uh, reason to have a car with all the perfect uh, transportation systems which is there in Singapore. But I think it's an emotional thing for me anyways. And I'm kind of a well, tech geek to some extent. So I really like the car. And uh, uh, it was always a dream since I saw it the first time in, uh, in Hong Kong way, way back. And uh, when I saw it, I said, I really want to have a Tesla at some point in time. And uh, yeah, when they came to Singapore, you know, in the, initially with the, on the, on the apparel imports, uh, I had a look at it, but super, even more expensive than it is now. And then finally it arrived as an actual uh, purchasable standard car in Singapore. And then uh, here we are with that. Can you please tell our viewers the story of how you ended up clicking the buy button? And you see that uh, hedgehog going, haha, <laughs> yes. Oh yes, the hedgehog. That was actually quite surprising. I think Tesla is one of these car makers which really surprise you because uh, things are very different as they work. Um, they kind of changed the way of uh, selling a car as a utility product to a car as a service. And uh, uh, well, the way to actually getting it was, uh, it was actually very, I asked my wife if we want to have a look at uh, Tesla generally and uh, just to have a look, obviously. And then we walked in and they had a car standing here. And then I, uh, I asked her, uh, what do you think we, we getting a car? Uh, because uh, I kind of a lease running out already. Uh, and then she said, uh, well, okay. And uh, then we kind of made this. I didn't tell her the full cost and the full price and everything. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know how it is. So <laughs> that's how it begins. Just have a look. <laughs> Nothing wrong, right? Just taking a look. Exactly. It's like window shopping. <laughs> yeah. So what was the whole process like uh, from actually deciding to buy the car to today, three to four months later, receiving delivery? One thing that many people are surprised by is you can just buy this car on a website. Correct. Which is very different than other cars. You literally go to the website, you pay 150 Singapore dollars as a what I call a registration fee. Uh, and that's pretty much it. And the cool thing is, once you actually buy the car, you can install or immediately install the, the Tesla app on your phone. And um, you already get uh, a lot of uh, ideas of what you can actually do with the car, like the, the book of the car and the different features and functions of the car. So it's really a cool thing to actually understand how the car works before the car gets. And the closer you get to delivery, you get actually the notification that the car delivery is scheduled for a certain date. So it's a kind of a cool, complete online process and how it works. So again, they have completely changed the way of how a car is delivered. Having said that, I think you really need to like this process. If you are a classical car buyer who likes um, the full in-person experience where you have a person on the side who takes you through the experience and uh, uh, everything is manual, it's a bit different. But I think uh, the more the world is actually pivoting to uh, sustainability and to um, well transportation as a service, I think it's a really cool way of actually providing deliveries for cars and really digitalizing and digitizing the whole kind of process from buying a car to actually receiving the car and actually maintaining the car with uh, all the data Tesla has and all these kind of things. So um, uh, it's a cool experience. With change comes a little bit of fear. We all know we need to adapt. Well, how do you prepare for today for your delivery day? What do you do as an owner? 
To be honest, um, I read a lot on Facebook, I read a lot on various other platforms and people go nuts about like uh, multiple generated um, checklists to check the different gaps in the car. I'm pretty relaxed uh, in that because the car is kind of a, um, well for me, a, a, use a, a product which I use on a day-to-day -day basis. So I uh, pretty much just saw the general YouTube videos on, on Tesla and uh, I drove a few Teslas before so uh, I didn't really do a lot of preparation for it because you don't actually need to do a lot of preparation because I think the way the Tesla is designed from a usability perspective, I would say, is actually much more intuitive than uh, the average car out there. So the moment you get into it, if you ever use an iPad, which I believe many of people have, um, everything is kind of there on the screen and there are not many buttons. In fact, there is no button. You have two buttons on the steering wheel, which I'm sure you know. Um, so everything is super intuitive. There is nothing distracting. So uh, I'm sure everyone can find their way around a Tesla without really preparing for it. One thing you need to prepare for though, uh, it is fast. Um, so uh, I just drove out of the uh, 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 collection area and you can feel that it's a completely different experience from driving the car. I'm sure you get used to it within a couple of hours, but um, I think that's just one thing you have to kind of take note before you take Tesla, but that's about it. Is this your first electric vehicle? Absolutely, it's my first electric vehicle, yes. How do you prepare for it? Do you try to find chargers in your condo? Tell us a little bit more about your yeah. planned charging situation. I think one of the, initial challenges that people think is they have to change their lifestyle because initially when you have a, um, a combustion engine car you drive to a gas station you refill the car within a minute or two or three whatever it is whether you, you pay the car and you drive off so with a tesla depending on which charger you use charging could take up to an hour for example but i think um there is actually not so much of a lifestyle change which people talk about because i think uh you can incorporate that in your day-to-day -day life for example if i go to any of the locations in singapore and most of them, as you all know, are kind of fitted with, uh, uh, with chargers these days. You can actually uh, create some sort of destination charging. You go to the location, you charge your car for an hour or two and you drive off. You can kind of op incorporate that into your day-to-day -day life. Um, so um, I had a look at the kind of charging infrastructure of these in Singapore, which is massively increasing these days. And uh, with the plan of Singapore, which is great in terms of kind of increased sustainability and EV in general, um, plenty of opportunity out there. So I don't, I'm not so much worried about, not worried about charging. Um, and I think uh, the network will grow much better and uh, even now there's plenty of opportunity to there. In your situation, would you have home charging or it's purely destination charging? For me, it's uh, purely destination charging as of now. Having said that, uh, the latest condos uh, do have uh, charging as well. Um, so let's see if my next property is uh, able to kind of incorporate that uh, into their, into their uh, uh, car park. Yeah, there are some lo locations like UK, they mandate that every new building should be EV charging compatible and ready. Hopefully we get that here in Singapore. How much does the presence of the supercharger network here in Singapore play into your decision in getting a Tesla? I think the supercharging network is kind of, for me anyways, that's what I think for now, well, not having driven it, the last resort, really. If I really have to get a quick charge in for whatever reason, because tomorrow I go to JB or wherever I go, I go there for 15, 20, 30 minutes, whatever, charge quickly and then drive off. Having said that, um, I would probably not use it uh, if it all works out as my day-to-day -day kind of charging option. Because again, I have a charger in the office, uh, they're in various shopping malls, there are chargers, so I probably incorporate the charging into my day-to-day -day living, opposed to giving going to a specific Tesla supercharger. But again, that's theory for now. Let's see how that uh, actually plans out. We'll figure it out. Sometimes <laughs> uh, some veteran owners will say they forget to charge or they had a busy day. It's good to have a nice backup. The supercharger is there for you. And that network is expanding. Uh, we're having one in Woodlands and one more in the West coming up soon as well. For a total of eight supercharger stations. So with this new car, timing matters as well. For a lot of Singaporeans, they wonder, is this thing the certificate of entitlement? This piece of paper can cost more than a car. Why get a Tesla now, not wait for the COE for category B drop a little bit more? Well, the COE, and as we all know, it's something which is really highly unpredictable. I mean, there is a trend towards it. You can kind of screen it and so forth. Um, but the trend is usually not in a way that it would drop massively within a couple of months or weeks. Uh, and uh, if you have personal reasons, if you need a car or emotional reasons, if you really want a car, then sometimes um, the cost is being offset by something which is not tangible, which is kind of the want to have the car or the wish to have that car uh, to fulfill a lifelong dream, I guess. And then uh, uh, that's where Sometimes you tend to oversee, um, uh, you know, the cost of uh, the series. But definitely, it's super expensive. And uh, if you can wait, you know, and if you're not uh, in urgent need of a car, I'm sure the series will come down at some point. Uh, and the, the uh, uh, not, it's not just the series. I think tax as well for uh, for some of the Tesla models is fairly high as well. And I think something is going to be done about this as well at some point in time. So if you're not in a hurry, uh, obviously just.
wait for now, you know, and I'm sure there's some uh, some change in that. Fair. Now, let's actually join Lars as he just goes through a little bit of a checklist for new owner, both the exterior and the car. We hit inside the car as well, and just learn a little bit more about his next steps, what's going to happen right after picking up the car, because this car is fresh off the factory from Giga Shanghai, and it's barely a hundred miles, if anything. It's just it, driven from nine the, kilometers. Nine kilometers. <laughs> it's just driven from Giga Shanghai to the ship. It shipped here to Singapore. It delivered a service center. That's it. Let's take a look. I'll be behind the camera as Lars is, gives us a short visual checklist. Lars, you can just walk us through like, what should we look for from the outside? Many people say check for panel gaps because many years ago, Tesla was known for wider panel gaps. So walk us through what you think is helpful for a new owner to see from the outside. Yeah, I think the, the, well, the standard stuff, which I think you should check with every car, and it's not just Tesla specifically, it's really the, the, the gaps obviously indoors and see if there is any kind of uh, deviation from the standard gaps. And same goes obviously for the rubber inserts and everything. Um, and that's for all the panels on the car, especially the boot, uh, uh, the boot and the uh, frunk, as they call it, the front boot. I think that's quite important to have a look at. Um, I always like to look for uh, uh, um, uh, rim scratches because um, they look obviously quite cool. So you want to make sure that those are not uh, not scratched. But usually in a brand new car, that's not really an issue. Um, undercoat as well. These are some things. But again, in a new co a new car, that's usually uh, not an issue. But I like to have a look at it anyway. Another thing which I like to have a look at is the uh, parking sensors because sometimes the inserts they're not really straight and it makes sense to actually make sure that they're in straight as well uh, plus the light gaps and everything. And last but not least, very important is obviously scratches and uh, I've heard stories about new cars which have been delivered which had some uh, irregularities in the paint so it really makes sense to just have a quick look at the car and see if there are any major surface scratches uh, because once you drive off uh, the coat uh, they obviously wouldn't take any responsibility for the scratches which are in the car. Uh, windscreen cracks is usually not an issue and that usually would then be covered by warranty later on. Um, but really just uh, surface scratches on the car would make a lot of sense. Uh, one thing which I like to check though is the trunk as well because the trunk lining uh, can be off sometimes. So you really make sure that the trunk lining is uh, uh, in place as well so that's just nicely set in and everything is uh, uh, as it should be. Uh, because obviously the trunk is something which you might use uh, uh, very, very frequently. And other than that, I think um, that's pretty much what you what you get um, and something you should take care of from a Tesla delivery perspective. Again, not so much different from a standard car, I guess. Are there accessories down here? For many new owners, they didn't realize this space. Well, the one thing I can tell you if you buy a Tesla, um, you get only one freebie, which is a uh, USB memory stick, which is uh, required for the car, for the sentry mode, for the camera recording and all these kind of things. But that's pretty much all you get for a Tesla. So no, uh, there are no things. And as you know, for a Tesla, you don't need, uh, technically you need a spare wheel, but you don't need any kind of uh, uh, charging accessories, like a jumping cable and all those things because it's an EV. Um, it doesn't have any um, of the standard things like oil exchange and stuff you would have to do with a normal car. So there is no really tools which you have, uh, which come with the car, which is again, a major differentiation and uh, ease of life actually compared to a standard uh, combustion engine car. But yeah, I think that's, uh, that's about it when it comes to the delivery of uh, a brand new Tesla. And now let's head inside to see if there's any other checklist that the owner will look at. We're now inside your Model 3 performance. What made you pick a performance versus a rear wheel drive? Um, I always had this uh, since I was uh, young actually. Um, if, I, if I buy something and it's not uh, on the top end of the thing, I kind of regret that I didn't spend the extra kind of, uh, and usually it's just a fraction of the actual cost. So if I don't spend the extra fraction of the cost to get the top end model, if I then see a top end model on the street, um, so I went for the performance version because uh, if you look in the context of the overall price of the car, uh, it's such a major difference really. And also I think uh, if you look at resale and the resale curve uh, worldwide, um, if you have a performance model, um, it does have uh, a higher resale value from a percentage perspective. And last but not least, uh, the reach of the car, um, the battery capacity is a bit higher as well. Not that it's a major challenge in Singapore, but it's all those small things which, uh, in my opinion, make a difference when you resell the car. And also for me as a, as a car owner to have this little bit of uh, peace of mind and the extra, a uh, little bit of extra power, which, uh, which I kind of appreciate uh, as, a, as a car enthusiast uh, as well. That is a winning pitch. So <laughs> share this with your loved ones. This is a winning pitch for why it is not nice to have to get a performance, but it's actually a good idea. 
you get a performance version. We're inside the car. Uh, as you can see, the, the car still comes with like the, the screen wrap. What do, what do you look for inside the car to make sure everything is okay? Same as well as outside, really panel gaps. Um, if there's anything majorly, and also scratches on the uh, on the wood trim here, which uh, I heard are there a few times as well. Um, and obviously I also look under the carpets if there is anything, any scratches. We have the, uh, um, the foot inserts here. So just to make sure that this is fine. If all the kind of inserts open in the right way and the way they actually should be opening, I think that's quite, um, quite an interesting thing as well because sometimes the chassis can split a bit. Um, and uh, generally scratches um, in the interior and on the seats as well. Having said that, um, in a new car, usually that's not an issue. Um, usually the outside is more of a problem because that's what's handled uh, on the ship and which is handled during transportation and everything. But the inside usually is, uh, is okay. Um, and yeah, that's really what I'm looking for. One of the things I'm looking for and which people are really surprised about is um, Obviously, the software version. Once you pick up a Tesla, you want to make sure that it has the latest software version, which you can uh, obviously update with uh, uh, with the screen, um, uh, with your app which you have on your phone, and that makes sense because uh, you don't want to start with a with an outdated uh, uh, software, which is uh, which is on the Tesla. You've owned several cars. You drove many. How you consider the build quality of this Tesla Model Three? Um, so for my initial kind of C and um, again, I drove a few for a few weeks uh, in the US. I think the build quality has caught up in the few in the recent month. Um, again, there were a lot of uh, um, conflicting stories initially about uh, many panel gaps and different issues with Tesla from a build quality perspective. But I think um, they have kind of had a long runway of perfectionizing their uh, process of um, building the car. And I think the quality has dramatically uh, increased compared to uh, recently. And I just uh, uh, dropped off my uh, previous car, which was a, a BMW 330 2020, um, which uh, was from a build quality perspective, I think very, very similar. So I don't think there is a major issue or a major problem when it comes to build quality. So overall, I think it's uh, it's pretty good when we look at build quality. What one last tip you'd have for new owners uh, getting their car for delivery? Anything you've learned along the way? Um, one thing is uh, be prepared in terms of cost for now. Um, the Rotex can change on a daily basis based on the uh, motor rating of the car and the motor rating is fluctuating with each of the car's delivery so there can be a bit of a change. Um, and the other thing is obviously insurance. So many insurers do not yet have uh, packages for EVs. So be mindful of which insurers you, insurer you choose and also do a lot of comparisons because the price can vary from a few thousand to uh, uh, almost 10,000. So be careful of which insurer you choose and uh, as well, what is the coverage for the insurers. Thank you for that good call out. Insurance rates for EVs and Teslas are higher right now than normal ICE cars. And also, the road tax, unfortunately, for Teslas in Singapore are higher than even some supercars. Now that you have the car, what are you going to modify? So usually, I don't like to do a lot of modifications on the car because I like the car to be like it was intended from the manufacturer. And many modifications are too expensive anyway. Um, the one thing that's really important in Singapore, I think, is uh, window tint because obviously we have a lot of sun in Singapore. So it makes sense to have, uh, have that to kind of uh, reduce the infrared uh, radiation within the car to kind of keep it a bit cooler. Uh, and the second thing, which uh, I'm doing the first time on a car, uh, so don't judge me, it's a wrapping of the car to do a, a, a not a different color, but uh, to protect it. Because okay. uh, I just want to make sure that uh, if I ever resell the car, I can just rip off the wrap and uh, I have a car which is brand new underneath. So that's kind of the, the two things I'm doing, and that's about it. Protective wrap, and again, the tin for the windows. It's really hot here. May was the hottest month on record, and our humidity is pretty insane as well. And I know you, you bike as well, so you do have a mountain bike. No plans for roof rack. Well, Singapore is so small, you can cycle literally everywhere from your uh, doorstep. So I'm not going to put uh, a roof rack as of now. Having said that, if I ever want to drive over to Malaysia or some other countries, th some people drive to Thailand, for example, right? Uh, maybe I'll consider putting a roof rack, but for the time being, no plans. Lars, thank you for sharing this special day with us. Perfect. Great. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for telling the story. We hope you found this useful. For all of you who are receiving deliveries, this is a busy month for Tesla. It's the last month of the quarter. If you found this video useful, click the like button, hit subscribe to stay updated to more videos on Tesla. Take care everyone. Thank you guys. Cheers. When you get a new Tesla, you will see that there is a calibration in progress sign on your main console. So on the top right, you will see this driving wheel. You want the blue line to be complete for calibration to be done. So the fastest way that many Tesla owners in Singapore have found to do it is to actually just drive on the freeway We're going on the CTE for 5 to 10 minutes and calibration should be done. So as you can see, we're now on the approaching the freeway and the calibration circles halfway done.